Hey, it's Taylor with Mom on the Spectrum, and today we're talking about autistic stimming. What is it? Why do we do it? What are the benefits? And how can we relearn the art of stimming if it's something that maybe we trained ourselves out of as a late diagnosed autistic adult? And I say the art of stimming because I really believe that when practiced intentionally, it can really enhance your overall quality of life as an autistic adult. Stick around till the end of the video. I'm going to be telling you about my new absolute favorite stim toy and how you can get your own. If you're new here, like I said, I'm Taylor. I started this channel as a late diagnosed autistic mom. I received my professional autism diagnosis at the age of 31. It totally changed my life and I knew that I had to share everything I was learning with everyone because that's just what I do. So if that sounds like something that might benefit you either as a late diagnosed autistic adult or maybe there's someone important to you that is on the autism spectrum, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell and you'll be notified anytime a new video is posted. So what is stimming? This is my definition. I wrote it up here for us. So stimming is the act of moving excess energy out of the body and it's often done subconsciously to regulate one's emotions and or a psychological state. There's all sorts of stims. There's physical stims, which would, it could be like rocking. It could be jumping or bouncing. The stereotypical autistic stim is hand flapping. It can also be dancing. There are also verbal stims. So you might have heard the term echolalia before, which is the repetition of sounds, repetition of words. Also singing is a verbal stim. There's visual stims. Think lava lamps, desktop screensavers, um, maybe watching an hourglass, all the sand fall down. There's stim toys, fidget spinners, poppets, fidget gadgets, all kinds of things that are on the market now. There are so many different ways to stim. So from my own observations, I, um, I get to spend a lot of time with the autistic community. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I do group sessions. I'm constantly learning from y'all, researching information to help support our community. And something that I've noticed is that we often are dealing with very large amounts of uncomfortable energy. So if you've heard me talk about autistic inertia on the channel before, um, I'll put a link to the video in the description if you want to learn more about it. It's this idea that whenever we're doing something, it's incredibly hard to stop doing that thing. And if we're not doing anything, it's incredibly hard to start doing something. Okay, so if you think about it in terms of energy, let's say that you are in the zone, the productivity zone, you're in flow state, and you are just getting so much done. If you have to stop, if you have to get out of that flow state, it is just this surplus of uncomfortable energy that you don't know what to do with. It's like this huge snowball that's been rolling down the hill for hours. And there's only one thing that can happen. Just like this explosion of energy, right? Or if you're coming from a place of stagnant energy, you're in bed and you absolutely can't move, or you've been on the couch for hours and you know that you need to get up and make something to eat, but you're stuck. That's this stagnant energy that becomes really, really uncomfortable in your body. And, and it, can feel overwhelming, claustrophobic, but it's it's this pent up energy that gets stuck and stagnant. We also are constantly taking in a lot of sensory information. So people on the channel have described this as like being an antenna, where when you walk in the room, you're taking in everything around you. So you're receiving all of this energy through an antenna yourself, and all of that energy doesn't necessarily have a channel to flow through. So again, all of this energy that's staying in your body with nowhere to go. So stimming is a way that we can channel this excess energy out of our bodies. And we do it subconsciously, probably most of the time, sometimes con consciously, but it's this ingrained practice that we have as autistic people to help alleviate some of that extreme tension and discomfort that we can feel from all of the energy and information that we're taking in. You can stem when you're happy, when you're overwhelmed, when you're frustrated, when you have sensory overload, when you have overpowering thoughts that are just overloading your brain. You can stem just because it feels good. So why is stemming important? I wanna share some quotes with you from a couple of articles that I found online about autism and stemming. I'll make sure to link those in the description if you'd like to read them, they're both really good articles. This first one, this quote is from Matt Medina from Embrace Autism. And he said, I find that stimming improves my ability for active listening, especially during long conversations. Any sort of cognitively demanding task will unconsciously involve me stimming as I work through the problem. Something about the repetitive movements locks me into my work and allows me to funnel that concentration onto the object of my mentation. This next quote is from Stephen Cap, who wrote an article called Stimming, Therapeutic for Autistic People Deserves Acceptance from the Spectrum News. 
Stimming is proving to be a healthy and constructive way of modulating emotions and external stimuli. Study participants told us that stimming soothes intense feelings, helping them regain a sense of control. Participants said they sometimes stim out of joy or excitement, and other times out of anxiety or boredom, but that the emotion colors the behavior. For example, hand flapping that reflects a positive emotional state often involves holding the arms out and making a waving motion, whereas in hand flapping due to distress, autistic people tend to keep their hands and arms near the torso. I thought that was really interesting. So it's almost like um, it can be kind of brought in internally as like a way to kind of protect yourself. You can keep things close if that feels comforting, but if you're happy, you know, you don't feel this need to protect yourself. You're going to kind of be out here and you might be dancing or waving your arms around a little bit bigger. And again, these are just a couple of examples. There's so many different ways to stem. So a question that I've been asking myself the past couple of years, it's been about three years since my diagnosis, which I can't believe, but I've asked myself, did I forget how to stem? What happened? Because I think initially, like I felt kind of separate from others in the community because I didn't think that I don't I didn't think I had these big over stems. And I looking back on my childhood, it's like I don't remember doing that kind of stuff. And so I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this doesn't fit me. Um, but I slowly realized over time that I for sure stem in so many different ways all the time. So there's different reasons why we might stop stimming. It's pretty easy to learn early on that stimming is not necessarily socially acceptable. So not a whole lot of other people are doing it. Maybe no one around us is doing it. And so it can be very uncomfortable to be the only person doing something. We wanna be like our peers, we wanna blend in, so we don't wanna be noticed. People might have told us that it was annoying or distracting to do those things, maybe in class, maybe at home, it was upsetting to your parents or your brothers or sisters, so you found a way to not do those things anymore. There's all different reasons why we might stop stimming in larger ways, but this is often channeled through other discrete ways of stimming or covert ways of stimming. And looking back on my life, I can see it everywhere. I picked at my lip, I bit my nails, I picked at him, I twirled my hair, I tapped my feet, I drummed on the desks. There's all different ways, even blinking. Like I, I remember a phase where I just was like blinking all the time because it felt, even right now, it feels kind of good. Um, so there's all different kinds of co covert ways where we might subconsciously, our body might say, well, I still need an outlet for these things. And it finds a way to move that energy through your body. There's my kitty. He is literally staying just out of frame. So your body tries to find these other outlets. And it's really interesting what our body comes up with, because again, there is this excess energy and it has to go somewhere. It can't just stay. It has to move. I think these covert stems happen a lot for especially high masking individuals, which just means if I haven't said it already, that you become really skilled, you've become really skilled at blending in socially and adapting different social norms to fit in. Um, so we go covert with our stems because it helps us play the part of a certain social group. We're not sticking out. We're not being annoying or distracting. Um, one thing that people share with me a lot too is that they scrunch their toes and their shoes. That's something that you can do that nobody ever sees. So what happens when we suppress these stems? If we need an outlet and we're not giving it to ourselves, it kind of becomes like this traffic jam in our brain. So our brain has all these processes that are trying to happen. And I think, you know, this is compounded for autistic individuals because we've got you know, social anxieties, we've got delayed processing, we've got sensory overwhelm, and then trying to figure out a way to direct this energy. If, if we don't feel safe physically stimming, it's like this traffic jam and this huge cognitive kind of brain fog sets in where our executive functioning becomes impaired and we can't make decisions as well because there's not enough bandwidth. Our bandwidth is tied up trying to figure out which process it needs to focus on first. The energy is stuck in our brain and there's no channel that it can move through. When this happens, you might notice, and for some of you, this might be kind of the precursor to a meltdown, kind of a warning sign that you're approaching that. You might start to get this fe feeling of being claustrophobic, of feeling like your skin is tight or like you need to crawl out of your skin or you're, you're itchy. Um, this feeling of just being stuck or overwhelmed or claustrophobic, that is a sign that that energy is stuck and that it needs a way 
to flow through you. You might just have no other words other than you feel stuck. You might not be able to make decisions. You might try to think through the same situation over and over and over again, but you can never quite finish the thought. Though That's when I start realizing, oh, I think I need to stem, like something's stuck. So as you start becoming more aware of your own patterns and what tends to happen whenever you feel stuck, um, whether, whether it does feel like your skin is crawling or you feel stuck or claustrophobic, just simply becoming aware of that and realizing, okay, something needs to change something. The energy is not flowing right right now and giving yourself the opportunity to stem, test it out, try something new. If you're not feeling comfortable doing it in front of other people, which I still don't really feel comfortable doing big stems in front of other people, go in the other room, go in a closet, just jump around. I like to bounce on my toes and like throw my hands down, just kind of feel the weight of my body going into the floor. That always feels really comforting, but give yourself an opportunity to, to explore and try all different kinds of stems and take note of what it feels like in your body after you do it. So let me explain. One of you had commented about imposter syndrome. And as we try to, to relearn how to stem, we start rethinking everything like, oh, am I just making this up? Do I actually need to stem right now? Or am I just forcing this? I would say it's going to feel really foreign and awkward for a while because your brain, we have grooves in our brain and and you've trained your brain when you're feeling overwhelmed, don't take this path, take this path, right? The discrete covert stem. So in order to start creating a new neural pathway, you're going to have to make that decision over and over and over again to try something different. So keep experimenting and then take note of how you feel after you engage in a stem. Does your body feel lighter? Do you feel less pent up energy? Do you feel less stuck? How are you emotionally? How are you able to make decisions now? And as you focus on the results of the stemming in your life, that will help with the imposter syndrome of, am I making this up? Because I would bet that you'll start noticing improvements in your ability to function when you start intentionally engaging in active stimming. So the more you focus on the benefits for yourself, the the quieter that imposter syndrome becomes. But it is a practice. It does require some grace and self-compassion and just not taking your, yourself too seriously, right? Because it can feel really silly to stim. I like to headbang in my car by myself sometimes. There's just there's all different kinds of ways to do it and it, it'll take a while to start feeling comfortable with any of it. You can start small. There's no pressure to do anything big and large. You can start at your own pace with whatever feels good. One thing I wanted to mention in this video is the importance of allowing autistic stems. I think this might be one concern that people have about ABA therapy. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but some people have said that with ABA therapy, it can train kids to not stem when they need to stem. So I would just kind of like to throw out a word of uh, um, word of warning. Is that a phrase? word of caution. I don't know. Does that make sense? Um, just if, if you do know someone in ABA therapy, if you have a child in ABA therapy, I would just encourage you to make sure that you kind of understand, uh, the goal in that therapy for your child and that you make sure to encourage stems whenever it feels right to your child. Another thing that kind of pops up in educational settings is you might have, you may have heard teachers say quiet hands, you know, keep your hands in your lap, be quiet. And as I've been researching and learning about stimming this week, I've kind of stumbled upon a rally cry of parts of the autistic community being loud hands. So I'm encouraging you and especially the parents encouraging you to encourage your kids to have loud hands and to do what they need to do in order to feel comfortable. And that that's not socially unacceptable, right? And hopefully that will become more and more normalized as we learn more about the importance of stimming. Okay, so before we wrap up, I have to tell you about my new favorite fidget toy. So I get so many offers in my inbox for fidget toys. Will you try this out? Will you try this out? I promise you, I turned down like 90% of them because I don't want to share stuff with you all that's just junk. You know, there's so many like cheapy products out there that have weird textures and smells and they're loud and clunky. This is not that. Okay. This is called the Ono Roller. 
O-N-O. It comes in different colors. I wanted rose gold because it's one of my favorites. It's beautiful, it's elegant, it's smooth, seamless. There are no clicks, there are no sounds whatsoever coming out of this beautiful fidget roller. And I wanted to read something to you that the founder said about why they created this. So they said, even with a yoga class here and there, I'd find myself fidgeting while watching TV on the couch and mindless, mindlessly scrolling my phone after a long day and making my anxiety worse. Fidget products on the market were cheaply made and annoyingly noisy. I got fed up and decided to put my industrial design degree to work. I set out to create a high quality, completely silent fidget that would be appropriate for people of all ages and actually help with relaxation and focus, not just promote more fidgeting. This, my friends, they nailed it. So what I love about the fidget roller, this is heavy. This isn't cheaply made. This is like very solid. I'm going to drop it on my desk just so you can hear what it's made out of. Caution, loud noise. Very nice quality. Um, they even say on the package that you can put it in the freezer and then roll it on your body for another sensory experience. It's a really nice feeling material that kind of heats up a little bit after you use it in your hands. You can use it all different kinds of ways. You can roll it on your neck, you can roll it on your back, between your hands, and then I, this is my favorite thing to do, is just twirl it like this. Lately, this has been within my reach at all times. If I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one session, if I'm running a group webinar or whatever, this is in my hands, and it just really helps me channel some of that extra anxiety and like energy that I have into something that doesn't make sound and feels really nice. So in between this shot and the one that you just saw, I've ransacked my house for the other version of this. Um, there's a, a kid version that's not made out of this heavy of a weight. It's like um, more of a rubbery feel, but it still has weight to it. Um, and it's a smaller size, so it works better for smaller hands. So hopefully I'll find it and I'll be able to edit it in, but if not, I will show you a picture of it. And um, we, my family, we love these. We like anytime we see it around, we just pick it up and um, try not to fight over it. So if you're interested in getting one for yourself, like I said, I think there's like four different colors and you can go to the link in the description and use the code mom on the spectrum for 10% off. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. My goal is that you will feel encouraged to cultivate the practice of stimming in your life and that it will add value by helping you feel more regulated, more grounded, more centered. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments how these practices work for you. And if you decide to get one of these, what color you get for yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if it was helpful to you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.